Hey there. So the goal of today's video is to better understand what exactly a topographic map is, including what it shows, and how to use the different features on the map to help better visualize the area that you're looking at. So let's jump right in. The first question we want to answer is, what exactly is a topographic map? Well, a topographic map, it represents a region, and it shows all of the geographical features of that region, including three-dimensional features like hills and valleys. The ultimate goal of a topographic map is to display these three-dimensional features with ups and downs and cliffs and slopes, rivers and streams, all of these three-dimensional features, but on a flat two-dimensional map. So let's take a look at an example. Here you can see a simple topographic map, often called a contour map. And the feature that should jump out to you on this map are all of these dark, squiggly lines all over the place. Those lines end up being the key to topographic maps. They're called contour lines. So, what exactly is a contour line? Well, those contour lines that you saw running all over the map, those show the shape of the land, and they do it by connecting points that have equal elevation. Let me give you an example. Here's that map again. So if I look at point Y on the map, I know its elevation is 500 meters, and I know that because point Y is located directly on the 500 meter contour line. And so by understanding contour lines, I know that any point on that line is going to have that same elevation. Of course, the other lines represent different elevations, and we'll look at that in a moment. So let's take a closer look. One of the things you might notice is that some of these contour lines, not all of them, but some of them are labeled. For example, the 500 line is labeled, the 600 line is labeled, and these labeled lines have a name. Those are called index contours. And these are contour lines that are clearly labeled with their elevations. Now, unfortunately, on most topographic maps, there's just not enough room to label the elevation of every single line. And this is why we use index contours, maybe every second line or every fifth line or every tenth line, depending on the map. Either way, oftentimes you will be given what's called the contour interval. And the interval tells you explicitly the amount of elevation increasing or decreasing with each line. Now this map is clearly labeled with an interval of 50 meters. And what that means is that as you go from one contour line to the next, there's going to be a change in elevation of 50 meters. So that contour interval tells you the elevation change from one line to the next. Fortunately, even if you're not given the contour interval, you can usually figure out what it is by examining the lines, and we'll see an example of that in a moment. Let's look at some other map features. Most maps are going to include a map scale, and this lets you determine the real-world distances between points as represented on the map. So for example, let's say I want to know how far apart points Y and Z were in the real world. I could use this map scale to figure out how many kilometers apart they are. A future video will take a look at how exactly we use a map scale. Finally, we'll notice that we also have a compass rose, and this is going to tell you the directions on the map and how they correspond with real world north, south, east, and west. This allows you to orient yourself when using a topographic map. So that's a basic overview of how a topographic map works. Let's take one other look at a different example. So here's another one. You'll notice we have the map scale at the bottom, and we have the compass rose down on the right-hand side. We have a bunch of contour lines, and I also see the ocean and some streams and brooks flowing across the surface. We also see a bunch of different points that might represent landmarks or trailheads, anything like that. The one thing I don't notice is there is no labeled contour interval. They're not telling me how much each line is going up or down by. But fortunately, with a little bit of work, I can figure out exactly what the interval is. And that's something that's important to be able to do, uh, especially when we get into more complex tasks like calculating the gradient. So if I zoom into the side of the map here, what I notice is that I do have two labeled index contours. I have the 250 line and the 500 line. And so I want to look at how many lines go in between them. In, in essence, I want to see how many jumps there are between these two index contours. So I can count them out. Here's one, two, three, four, and five. So there are five jumps between the two index contours. Now let's do a little bit of simple math. So my change in elevation here 
is equal to 500 minus 250. Because I know that when I'm walking from one index contour to the next here, I'm going from 500 down to 250 or 250 up to 500. So I know that that difference is 250. So between these two lines, the elevation changes by 250. Now I also know that there have been five contour lines here. There are five contour lines difference between them. And so if I divide that 250 change in elevation by the five contour lines, I get 50 per contour line. And so that means that my contour interval on this map is 50. Now you'll notice I'm not saying 50 feet, 50 meters, and that's because I have no way of knowing. This map is not labeled to tell me what the elevations are measured in. So I'm just going to say 50, or I could say 50 units. So now I know that each line changes in elevation by 50 units. So there's a quick overview of topographic maps. In our next video, we're going to take a look at how we actually draw these contour lines on a blank map. If you like what you're seeing, please remember to subscribe at Mike Samartano. Have a good one.